AJ Sort has played on the world stage, but it began here on the green soccer pitches of North San Diego County, where he became a case study in the dangers of contact youth sports. It started at this field in San Diego when I was six years old, I started playing at this club. Then on to Torrey Pines High School, an all-star and CIF champion, next to University of California, Berkeley, where he was team captain before turning pro and playing in major league soccer. His career peaking at the top of the game, European soccer in Sweden, a 20 year career filled with, he estimates, up to 20 serious concussions and thousands of hard hits to the head, injuries called sub concussions. It's very physical, it, no pads, full sprinting, running into each other, jumping for headers, elbows. Um, it's way more physical than anyone would imagine. The concussions piled up and he says each one worse than the other. Felt terrible, I felt awful. You know, I, I felt like I couldn't continue playing. It was a huge decision, hanging up his cleats. The game he loved had led to minor depression, major headaches, and long recovery times. And I just decided that, you know, enough was enough and it wasn't really worth continuing to suffer concussions or any damage. AJ says he hopes his early retirement may have saved him from CTE, the fatal brain injury found in NFL players that has too often led to suicide. He can't know for sure because it can only be diagnosed after death with an autopsy of the brain. A disease that took San Diego's own Junior Seau's life. Shooting himself on the chest, I believe that he did that because he wanted to save his brain. Seau's brain, along with Dave Dewerson's, a well-known and liked Chicago Bears player, were both sent to the epicenter of CTE research at Boston University. Both suicides woke up the NFL and players to the dangers of repeated concussions. Now the author of a groundbreaking study at BU tells Team 10 there are new alarming findings that CTE isn't just a danger to NFL players. It starts earlier. It's, uh, it's shocking to me. Our research has shown now repeatedly that the more hits you get over the course of the, you know, your years of play, uh, the more likely you are to get CTE. And that risk uh, exists for players at amateur levels as well as professional levels. Dr. McKee's bank of skulls, she now has 152 brains from athletes who died before 30 and never played professional in contact sports. We found that over 40%, about 41.2% of those 152 athletes uh, had CTE, diagnostic CTE. And that indicates to us that this disease can start quite early and it can affect players who, who play at amateur levels. Dr. McKee's research shows that for every two and a half years someone plays tackle football, the risk for CTE doubles. Her recommendation? play tackle only in high school, and since only a few players move on to college and the pros, most players will have only marginal risk. It's cumulative hits to the head at any level over, over your playing career, so shortening your playing career is an easy way to lower your risk. And there are other head injury dangers short of CTE, but just as damaging. The cause, again, repetitive concussions. It's the hard lesson Scott Evelyn learned at Mission Hills High School in San Marcos from a paralyzing head injury on the football field. Uh, he got hit and, it, and um, he, they, he laid on that field. And he didn't get up. He didn't get up and he didn't wake up. Scott is now wheelchair bound and nonverbal. But on that fateful Friday night under the lights, he spoke up loud and clear, telling his trainer he could not play any longer because of a series of hits to the head. He said, uh, my head hurts so bad, I can't even see the football. The trainer tell my son, um, you go ahead and sit down, you don't have to play. Um, I'm gonna go tell the coach. And then the coach said, Evelyn, get in. The lesson says his mom, take control, watch for signs of concussion, and if necessary, come out of the stands. Again, if he seems like he's getting up and walking the wrong direction, which I understood he did, then yeah, you go down and say, hey, I think that there's a problem. Um, take him out. Scott won a $4.5 million lawsuit in a settlement with San Marcos School District. 
money he would gladly give back for his help. His life was stolen from him. Dr. Amanda Golding works with brain injury patients at UC San Diego. She says there are things parents can look for from the stands. Major red flags for a concussion may be something like looking dazed, confused, stumbling on the field, um, being disoriented, uh, being slower in their reaction time or ability to get up from play. While most schools and leagues now have adopted rules to lessen head-to-head -head contact and have concussion protocols, parents should not hesitate to step in. This is really challenging because athletes um, typically are in sports because they enjoy playing them. They don't want to be removed from the game. They're concerned about missing the next practice or the next game. And so it really comes down to the people around the athlete and the system supporting a culture of safety. Be really vigilant and watch out for your child. I've learned that um, some coaches are, are much better than others. For A.J. Soares saying no more in his prime was the most difficult decision he ever made, but one he has never regretted. You don't want to play through it. It's, it's not worth it. It does nothing for you. I can tell you now, looking back, I wish I had taken way more games off. Researchers say the most at-risk sports for youngsters are tackle football, of course, soccer because of heading the ball which even in high school, they say, should be eliminated in practice and limited in games. In hockey, no checking until high school. And in lacrosse, where sticks often make contact with the head, remember, the fewer the hits in all, the less the risk. And concussions should be taken seriously with plenty of recovery time and even a doctor's visit before returning to play.